Our sermon this evening from Genesis 22. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servant, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The, the fire and wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up and there in the thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as the burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the place, the Lord will provide. And to this day, it, said, it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies, and through your offspring all nations on the earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. This is God's word. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours through our Lord who, who went through the crucifixion for you. Amen. Let me read the verse one more time. Then God said, take your son, your only son whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on the mountain I will show you. Could you do it? If God came to you and asked you to do something similar, would you obey what he asked you to do? Out of love and devotion to him, would you even do it willingly? Abraham's kind of at a decision point here, and this was not strange territory for him. He had made a ton of decisions that affected himself, his family, and everyone in his household just because God commanded him to do it. This is the guy who picked up his whole life and moved 400 miles to a place that he had never seen before. Abraham was a sinner, just like you and me, but when God said something, he believed it. But this was his only son, and he had waited 25 years for that son. When God first came to, to Abraham and Sarah and said that they were going to, to have a son, Abraham was 75 years old, and Sarah was 65 years old. They, they knew that they were long past the age of having children, but because God said it, they believed it. And even though they believed it, God still made them wait. He made them wait 25 years before they finally had their son, Isaac. And oh, how they loved their son. I'm sure every parent loves their, their children, right? But, but not like Abraham and Sarah loved their son. Because they knew that the only reason they had their son was because of the good grace and promise of their Lord. But now, that was the very son that God was asking Abraham to sacrifice. The one he had waited for. 
the one who the promise would be reckoned through, his only son, the son he loved so much. Does it sound familiar? It's no secret why we're sitting here on a Friday evening worshiping. Yet I kind of wonder if we, we kind of look at a situation like Abraham's, or, or as you start to apply it to yourself, if God asked you this, I kind of wonder if we take that a little bit differently. If we maybe even kind of depersonalize the facts of what happened on Good Friday. That we think that just because God is God, that this was somehow easier for him. That it was somehow easier for him to sacrifice his only son. But whatever Abraham was feeling when God came to him and asked him to sacrifice his only son, whatever you would feel if God asked you to do the same thing, God felt that. Don't think it didn't pain God when he heard his son pleading out to, ple- crying out to him in the Garden of Gethsemane. Don't think it, it didn't strike Strike the the father just as much as the son when he had to offer up his son like an animal to be slaughtered, like a lamb led to the slaughter. But this is what sin required. Sin required sacrifice. We see that throughout the entire Old Testament. Where there is sin, blood must be spilled, but the blood of goats and bulls would not do. The father needed to give up his one and only son. Because of the sin that has darkened the heart of every human that has ever existed. The gruesome nature of Jesus' crucifixion really just shows us how grotesque our sins are to God and just how seriously he takes them. That with every whip mark on Jesus' back, uh, every insult that he bore, every time he had to wipe spit off of his face, every time he, he spilled blood from the cross, Every time he, he, he bore the insults of, of others, every time he gasped for breath and wondered if that would be his last, that was the Father punishing him for your sins and for mine. Our sins did that to Jesus, and it all culminated in his worst suffering when the Father, who loved his Son so much, forsook him, withdrew his presence from him, severed the tie between him and his son, which was the worst suffering that Jesus could have gone through. And he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You see, it wasn't just physical suffering that he experienced on the cross, but he suffered in his soul. He, he suffered literal hell. Hell, by its very definition, is separation from God, and God has withdrew, had withdrew his presence from his son. Jesus suffered fully the punishment, both physically and spiritually, that we deserved. Yet God offered up his son without hesitation. Do you remember when he first made that offer? We go all the way back to the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve fell into sin. And what what was it? Like minutes later? Seconds? It was just a few verses later. God made the first promise of what he was going to do that he was going to send his son, and he had no second thoughts. Just a little bit, just a little bit like Abraham. God came to Abraham, asked him to sacrifice his son, and we get this little detail from the text, that Abraham left the very next morning. He didn't wait. He didn't try to stall and see if God would change his mind. He set out for Mount Moriah, a three days journey, and he brought with him everything that he needed for the sacrifice. He brought with him some servants. And when he started to see Mount Moriah in the distance, he he had his servants stay there and said, Isaac and myself, we will go the rest of the way. And they start climbing the mountain. Somewhere along the way, Isaac realizes we have all of the stuff for the sacrifice, but we don't have the sacrifice, the animal to sacrifice. And Abraham, you imagine him in his most calming voice, the Lord will provide the sacrifice, maybe some sadness as he says that too. And they get to the place where, where, they, where, they're, where they're going, they build the altar, and then it's time. Abraham fastens his, his own son to the altar and is about ready to do what God has asked him to do. 
how enormous Abraham's love must be for God. He loved his son so much. He had waited for his son for so long. And yet he loved God even more, that he was willing to give up his own son. How much the Father, God the Father, loves his son is beyond our ability to reason. He loves him with a perfect kind of love, but how much must he love you that he was willing to give up his only son for you? You know, it's, it's right for us to look at the cross and to reflect on our sins that put him there. We, we can see our sins very clearly in the suffering that he went through on the cross, but God wants you to see something else on Good Friday too. He wants you to see just how much he loves you. He loved his son so much, but he was willing to give up his son for you. You should have been the one tied to that altar on Mount Moriah. You should have been that one nailed to the cross on Golgotha. But instead, God provided for you a ram. Abraham didn't end up sacrificing his son. He was ready to. He had the knife in hand, but the angel of the Lord stops him. And God provided the sacrifice. He provided that ram in the thicket. You and I should have been the ones who were sacrificed But God provided you a ram. Your ram is Jesus who gave his life for you. When you see the cross, God doesn't want you to pity him. He gave up his own son willingly, without hesitation. He doesn't want you to pity Jesus for going through that. It certainly is a time to reflect on our sinfulness. But he wants you to see how much he loves you. He wants you to try to fathom how deep and wide and high and long his love is for you. You know, a little bit later in in the scriptures, we're given a little bit of divine insight into that that scene of Abraham and Isaac on Mount Moriah. Uh, The writer of the Hebrews says this, By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son, even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead. And so in a manner of speaking, he did receive Isaac back from the dead. When Abraham went to Mount Moriah with his son Isaac, he believed that God could raise Isaac from the dead. What Abraham believed God could do God knew he was going to do with his son. When Jesus breathed his last, right, before he, right, right after he said, it is finished, he, he bowed his head, he gave up his spirit, he was buried in the tomb. But the tomb would not be the end for Jesus. Amen.